The fuse has been lit, it's Wednesday night, Denise and Reg. Go sign a mic, come and get your Easter eggs. It's a dub, middle of the week, it's AE dub. Dynamic wrestling and end your night with us. It's a must, it's dynamite, it might combust. Speak now, we're gonna give you all the recap. Live on YouTube is where you see that. The Cali connection with the feedback. The California connection is in the building. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the AW Dynamite Post Show. It is March 27th, and we are here to break down this show. Of course, I'm joined by one half of the California connection, Righteous Reg. Reg, what up, man? In the building, it's your boy, your favorite rapper, your favorite writer, your favorite podcaster. It's Wednesday night, California Connection. Denise, my life is just getting really ready for Philadelphia. I don't know anything in the world. Every day I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do, where I'm going to stay, what shows I'm going to go to. So that's all that's been in my brain. How are you on this Wednesday? I know that you're always constantly busy too, so what's new? Honestly, today was kind of chaotic, but like in a lazy chaotic way, like I've had way more chaotic days, but today was still one of them. And my mind is just in a million different places. I'm pretty sure a lot of people get that way when you feel like you're just like having your hands in a bunch of cookie jars. And that's how I feel right now, minus the cookies, because I can't eat cookies right now. But I I don't know, I kind of feel a little chaotic. Why can't you eat cookies right now? Because, you know, sugar and sugar is bad for you. And I've been having bad reactions to sugar because, you know, I'm getting old and shit happens when you get old. So that's why I've been lowering my sugar intake. But Reg, it's tripping me out, by the way, because usually you have your sign on the other side and this time you're on the opposite side. So it's tripping me out. I flipped it over. I'm trying something new. We're doing all kind of different angles here. I don't know what's going on. It's a new day. It's a new world. Righteous Reg, that's me. I'm the media man. Denise, how did you feel about Dynamite tonight? I already know why you asked me that, Reg. I I, 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 I didn't ask you anything for any reason, Denise. I Look, I want all of the viewers here to know right now that Reg is setting me up. Don't try to put me in this, Denise. I was just asking a simple question. You are setting me up. (laughs) This is a setup. (laughs) Look, I enjoyed Dynamite today. There was two matches that I really liked and some of the stuff in between. But I feel like in terms of the entire show as a whole, this one didn't necessarily hit for me as much as the last like two to three weeks that have been like really strong for me. I didn't think this one was as strong of an episode. But I will say this. The opening match and the main event were complete bangers, man. Yeah, I think the thing that was cool is that, like, we started the show the last two weeks with Mercedes coming out, and this time we started with Will Ospreay and an insane match. That's what's great about AEW. There's going to be some episodes. We've had podcasts we came on here, and it's like, it wasn't the most story-driven. We didn't learn a lot of new things, but we did have some banging-ass matches, so it saved the show, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing, though. I feel like when it comes to the AEW audience, like you can never go back. Like I feel like you can never go bad if you really put on some really great matches, whether it's one or two or however many they decide to put on. Like no matter what, at the end of the day, we're pro wrestling fans and we're going to appreciate the wrestling on the show. So even though there wasn't like a lot that really had me jumping out of my seat today, minus some of the moves and sequences that we saw in the actual matches, uh, overall, like it was a fun show yeah see that was good it's like if they could drive us home like if they could get us into the show with the first match and kind of get us excited at the end of the show for what's to come i think that's a good way to accomplish what's going on here i liked a lot what's what happened in the show but like as far as like let's talk for 30 minutes about this angle i don't know if we're gonna be doing all that (laughs) i don't think we're gonna be doing that either so guys (laughs) bear with us today we'll get what we get hey this is the day this is the day where if anybody wants to ask us some fun questions this is the day (laughs) all right um first and foremost we want to give a shout out over to sheldon jackson who has gifted us five DWO memberships. You're very kind, Sheldon. I believe this Friday, this Friday, Reg, is going to be his 50th consecutive stream on this channel in which he has gifted memberships. 50 in a row, Denise? Yes. Wow. Shout out to Sheldon Jackson. That's amazing. I can't believe that. I know. I can't believe it. I'm so lucky. Thank you, Sheldon. Thank you. We got crazy one on one here who says Bucks did the made in Detroit. They are uh, on their way. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, do you think we're going to be seeing the Mortar City machine guns? I hope so. 
Oh, you hope so. I <laughs> look, I love the Motor City Machine Guns. Like when I first started like watching wrestling and oh, I should rephrase that because not when I first started. Let me rephrase that. When I started watching TNA wrestling, Reg, uh -huh. are you making that face? You're making me nervous. I'm like, I don't know where this is going. Denise. <laughs> no, it's not going any place bad. But when I first, okay. So I don't know if you know this. I, I might've said this to you before, but I used to not be a TNA fan. Like I used to think mm. that I had to hate TNA because I was a WWE fan. Totally. And I started watching TNA wrestling because I met a boy and he was a big fan and I really yeah. liked him. So I wanted to weird. talk to him about TNA. And so I had to watch. <laughs> and so when I first started watching TNA, I really became this like Motor City Machine Guns fan girl. They were part of what really got me invested in the product. Where do you, where are you meeting these guys that are into TNA? I married them. <laughs> <laughs> our fair one of our first dates was Bound for Glory 2010. You know what? I've met him. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot. He would. He totally would. With taking you to a TNA event. Hey, it worked. You got the girl, you guys. How to take it to an event with some weird shit? It happened. It worked. Shout out to the homie for sure. That's that's hella funny. I don't know what to say. It worked. <laughs> you want to know even more embarrassing, and I've never revealed this like ever, so I might regret it. <laughs> I should have known what I was gonna do for a living back then, because I didn't know obviously back then. But I wrote a review on the show that I was watching. It was like a review, like a review, but it was mm -hmm. specifically for him. So like I sat down and I wrote my little notes and I was like, this is what I thought about this. La, 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 la. <laughs> and I remember I even put, um, cause you know how like the Dudley boys, they were known as team 3d in mm -hmm. TNA. So I was like, everybody that was a pre WWE wrestler, it would be like, oh, team 3d better known to me as the Dudley boys and then my rest of my thoughts. So like, that's literally what I did. And then I would, then I called him and I read the whole thing. <laughs> I was, I was, I was boyfriend podcasting before I started <laughs> podcasting. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. And I also don't know where to end. <laughs> you call you did he request the review or you were just like i think he's gonna like if i review the show and, and tell him about it well he had said he wanted to know my thoughts after i watched but was he like a full can i get the full melzer ass review block, oh, block, block i gave like a full on review with stars and everything you're like not the stars man. not the stars but i said like what i liked and stuff like that and then and then here's another funny one so when i was on a budget because like you know i was on a budget and shit I needed money, right? And I had mm -hmm. told him like, hey, you know, I'm on a little bit on a budget. And he was like, I told him like, I'm trying to find ways to make money. So get this, I sold him all my TNA DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. This is a true story. <laughs> Did you guys have like TNA in your vows or something? You're like, and TNA <laughs> brought us together. If it wasn't for tna in 2000 <laughs> man anyways there there you go that's the quick story that just came out of this y'all are made for each other i swear like you had to stay with this person after that you can't go with anybody yeah else. i don't think anybody else would be like hey i'm gonna marry this psycho bitch <laughs> Ooh, crazy funny. 101 says poor crazy 101 he literally said one <laughs> one tweet <laughs> and it took off into that crazy 101 also says episode of dynamite Sora versus Takeshita clapping emoji can't wait to get into that we got Roberto Arsenal who says I have no doubt that Swerve will win the AEW championship and we'll have a banger with Osprey at the main event in Wembley Takeshita needs a belt too Roberto Arsenal out here long-term booking man I like it Crazy 101 says, um, seeing Tony Hawk with Darby Allen was very cool. We got Luke Thornton here who says, classic main event tonight. Swerve is the guy and would elevate the title. And as the face of AEW, great women's four-way two Shibata matches all day. I think there's a lot here that we're uh, in agreement with with Luke Thornton, and we'll get to more of that. Grapple Geekery says, Willow was on fire in that match tonight. Rafael Garcia says, Darby broke his foot and gets a Tony Hawk. Maybe we all need to break our feet. Also, I hate to say it, but I'm not jiving with the Bucks new style. Are you jiving, j jiving with the Bucks new style? Of course. I'm not, no matter what the Young Bucks ever do, I'm in 100%. That's, I'm in. I love it. I thought the match was awesome tonight. We'll talk about it. 
Lawrence Ross says, hi, Denise. Righteous Reg, great matches. Buff says, pay-per-view main event. No meat or PP main event. There you go. Sorry. Uh, Grapple Geekery says, California's Connections, Carolina Connection is currently eating some sugar-free cookies himself. I understand the no sugar struggle, Denise. Thank you very much, Grapple Geekery. Crazy no. 101 says, Jericho and Hook have a new Lion Hook shirt. I haven't seen it. And Grapple Geekery also says, I'm proud of your husband. He's a hero. Is James Mitchell your wedding preacher? <laughs> Questions, Denise. They need to be answered. <laughs> no, he was not the wedding preacher. Damn, that's full circle because you were on that TNA pay-per-view a couple months ago when you are talking. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. big full circle, full yeah, circle Yeah, there's been a quite a few big full circles where I'm like, the heck? Crazy 101 mm. says, wow, my super chat gave us the backstory of Denise. Look at that. Y'all don't know half my stories. <laughs> You'd be giving them up, though. I know. Sometimes I do. But I have some ones that are in my back pocket. But yeah, I, I didn't. I got into you and your husband's story. Very hilarious. Motor City Machine Guns. They have to, like... There's a lot of times it's like, oh, there's free agents. There's blah, 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 where I'm like, oh, I don't care. AEW, AEW has to sign this tag team. Like everything that they say about the Young Bucks and the reason that AEW exists, they were doing all that stuff against the Motor City Machine Guns. Like they paved the way. They made these revolutionary tag team matches. They revolutionized the tag team business alongside Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. So we have to see that on a grander scale. Uh, beyond that, there's so many tag teams we want to see him interact with. I've seen a lot of people be like, hey, in WWE, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see Saban and Alex Shelley get a run over there because they're one of the best tag teams of all time. So they deserve that. But personally, if we're talking about places to go, you know where I want to see him. You know what's up, man. And like, that's the thing, though. You talk about how these are guys that influenced. I remember when Alex Shelley won the uh, TNA World Championship and it was the first time he had won. One of the things that they said when he held up the championship was finally, it was somewhere along the lines of um, the face of a generation finally finally does it like he gets the the bow i forgot what it was that they said exactly but it was this yep. really profound moment though because it's a lot of wrestlers so many wrestlers that went on to do big and great things were inspired by either alex shelley or both the motor city machine guns definitely there was a time when i started first going to pwg and i saw alex shelley and then like months and weeks and years following that everybody was trying to do his style like he legit Beyond being in the Motor City Machine Guns, everything I said, he also inspired a whole generation of wrestlers just working like he does, bringing his different kind of styles and, and taste to this. So I'd love to see him there. Like, there's just so many reasons that them being an AEW would hit. But again, if they get a big contract over there, I'm not going to be mad about it. Yeah, definitely. Now we got Hunter Tillman here, who's been a member for 14 months. Just sending some love. Thank you so much to Hunter Tillman. We got Shelton Jackson here with a very generous super chat who says, can we add Shibata or Kyle O'Reilly or both to the BCC? I think they'll be the perfect addition to the group. Plus the story of you and your husband should be a video for the DWO members and hearing his side of the story. Oh, he'll never go on camera. <laughs> he'll never go on camera. I would have to like I think they would have to put a gun to us to my head. <laughs> no, nope, maybe to his. Nope, he would to not. Your head. Yeah, no, it has to be to your head. And they're like, no, her. And he's like, all right, I'll come on here. It's, I'll do it. <laughs> he won't do it. Trust me. He's those like anti. He, he's not like me. That's like, oh, you know, it'd be on camera. No, mm. he's not like that. Makes sense. But what do you think about this, though? Adding Shibata or Kyle O'Reilly to the BCC? Um, I kind of like this thing that they're doing with Kyle O'Reilly currently with him just kind of being by himself and trying to go on his own. But Shibata being in there, being the new kind of coach would be pretty awesome, actually. Hell yeah, man. Crazy 101 says, do you think Hangman, Hangman will cost Swerve at Dynasty? No, I don't think so. I hope, I hope not, Denise. That wouldn't be an outcome that I would be into. I don't really think it's time to continue that thing right now, you know? That would be some overbooked shit if that totally. were to happen. Totally. Exactly. They'd be just trying to reach for something if they did that, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much to Crazy 101 for sending that in. All right. So where do you want to start off today, Reg? Do you want to go uh, in order? You want to start yeah, let's just go in order. Let's start in order. All right. Well, I'm going to go in order. So here we go. Mm -hmm. We kick things off with Will Ospreay versus Katsuyuri Shibata. And this was a match that a lot of people were highly anticipating here. And they gave him like over 20 something minutes on the opening of the show. And this was a lot of freaking fun. Some of my favorite moments, Reg, was the big boot from Shibata to Will Ospreay. And to mm -hmm. those that didn't watch the match, they're like, really? Denise is marking out for a big boot? 
Yeah, because it was a really good one. And there was this moment, Reg, where they were on the outside of the ring and um, Will was like punching him or whatever. Um, and every time he did so, Shibata was like moving his chest forward and being like, no, like keep getting me, right? And then finally he freaking gets him and nearly takes off the head of Will Ospreay. Um, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Will Ospreay gets the win. Crowd was really into it. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, I think coming off the immediately starting it, the crowd was amazing here. Canada has been showing some love for all these couple of weeks with AEW, but the love that they showed for Will Ospreay here was again like, oh, we got this big star here, Denise. Like, we can start the show with him. The crowd's going to be super pumped, and we're just going to get like a close to or five-star match off rip with Will Ospreay. Shibata coming here and being that tough son of a bitch that he always is, Will Ospreay's chopping him as hard as he can, and Shibata's like, dude, that's nothing to me. Do something else. Let's go again. All the forearms are just insane. The work that they kind of played off of their old previous matches, the counters, this was a really exceptional match. I think Shibata, every time we see him, it feels like a miracle. It's like, I can't believe he's doing this. And then you see him take that Tiger Driver 91, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> should he be doing this? What are we doing here? This is crazy insane insane stuff i can't believe that osprey just has that in his arsenal now of like yeah one of my moves is i drop a guy on their neck really hard it's like <laughs> how do you pitch that denise like oh what move are you gonna do i'm gonna do the new move where i drop you really hard on your neck like what no you're not dude i'm not taking that yeah and it's like it, it, here's the thing though that will osprey is that wrestler now where like if you go in there and let's say you're not at the same level as will osprey right like you got your couple tiers below whatever and Will Ospreay, you're going to take that move. It's like, you know, you're not in a position to say no. I guess so, right? <laughs> like, come on, Reg, you got booked against Will Ospreay. Are you saying no to anything that Will Ospreay suggests? No. You want to drop me on my neck, dude? Go for it. You want to <laughs> elmo me really hard in the face? Let's do it. It's going to lead to a five-star match. I'm all in. Yeah, really great way to, to start it. And I love the story of Brian Danielson just wrestled Shibata. Now uh, Will Ospreay's doing it because they have this match coming up really building up some great stuff to to dynasty um really just great way to start the match start the show and will osprey telling the story of wanting this match and them having it not in new japan but to start an AEW dynamite it's crazy where we're at denise it really is honestly i can't even believe that we're sitting here and it's like we're watching a dynamite where it's kicked off by will osprey so we were waiting for this it finally happened we got a quick brian danielson video that happened mm -hmm. right afterwards just kind of recapping brian danielson's career uh any additional thoughts on that i mean he's amazing i think he's the greatest wrestler of our generation my number one wrestler of all time so i think that we're coming into this stretch of he says in the video that the final year is going to be the most epic year that we've ever seen and so far it's already five times better than i ever expected so yeah denise it's getting to that point of like i know it's close and like with sting like people have this uh relationship and history with sting and i you know i was a part of the attitude era i watched monday night war every week like that was a time for me but brian danielson represents something so different Denise like there's so many moments like I was at Wrestlemania 30 I got to see him win both of those things Wrestlemania 35 Kofi beat him like there's so many of these moments that I was personally attached to when he retires it's gonna be hard <laughs> dude I remember watching Brian Danielson wrestle at the Jewish Life Community Center in Hollywood for PWG yep. mm -hmm. and I it's, you know what I mean? This is like this the sweat box. little, it's a sweat mm -hmm. box. This is little video back, a little video, a little building, excuse me. Back then tickets were like $25. I mm -hmm. shit you not to sit like third row at PWG. Yeah. And I remember actually the first time I ever saw him wrestle was at PWG. Like I didn't know who he was. Cause you know, I was just getting familiar with people. And so he comes down and never seen him in his little maroon trucks and thinking like, Oh, I like, I was like, oh, this guy's a little plain, right? Like that was my first thought. And then he gets into the ring and I'm like, oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah. And then from that moment on, it was this thing of like, whatever that was, whatever he did, I like that and show me more people who can do that because that's what I want to keep seeing over and over again. Yeah, totally, Denise. When I first discovered D Brian Danielson, like 
I wasn't the hugest fan because I didn't like all the grapple stuff. But seeing him up close at those PWG shows at the Jewish Community Center against Super Dragon, against AJ Styles, against Chris Hero, I was like, oh, this guy's one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. And when you see it like you described, Denise, third row, and it's just right there, it's way different. But to know that he's gotten to the grandest scale, he's main event in WrestleMania, he's been in the main event, he's one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, and now he's going to get this. He's already on this insane run, and he's going to retire soon. It's like, it's too much. Damn, it really is too much, man. All right, so let's get into some more of these super chats. Thank you so much to Meet Normus, who says, Sub Hollywood Hammer and Media Man, WWE would call them the Motor City Maniacs and have them in straight jackets and dumb masks. <laughs> Pay them, TK. Uh, do you want to see the Motor City Maniacs? I don't know. They, they're doing people right over there is what I hear now, so I don't know. I'm trying to think of some other funky, funny names. The Detroit. Detroit something, yeah. Detroit. Detroit. I don't know. Car guys. Think. Car guys? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Detroit car guys. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. Vroom, vroom. All because of the... <laughs> That would be that would be their theme song right in the beginning. You'd hear rum, rum. <laughs> you just know it. Remember when Keith Lee, when they had him do that one thing Denise, and they had the little. We no, we don't mention that. That's in a vault somewhere like you can't bring that up anymore. <laughs> that haunts my dreams. That Bearcat thing. I was like, what rum. were they? I'm so happy that things have changed. Didn't someone want him to do a roar. Didn't Vince want him to do like a roar or something? he's never recovered and he never will recover. Oh God. You know, it's funny because that seems like 50 years ago. And like, that wasn't even that long ago. Not that long ago. Not that long ago. Crazy 101 says Wheeler, you to hate Shibata though. It's true. That is true. Fert Housen says always a good show for me when Shibata has a match. Yeah, I agree, man. I always agree. Mm -hmm. 1990K says Will Ospreay is my Roman Reigns, but with charisma. What? Roman Reigns has plenty of charisma. It's two different types of charisma, but they both got charisma. Don't do Roman like that, Mike. You know, he got some charisma. He wouldn't be where he was if he didn't have some riz. Bro, you know what I've been wishing? And honestly, if anybody does this, like, let me know. If someone made a Twitter account with just a bunch of screenshots of Roman Reigns' facial expressions, <laughs> I would love to follow that account. Like, that is my dream Twitter account. I feel Roman like there has to be me. one out there already, Denise. And please call it like Roman's face or something so I could know what the account is about. Mm. I love themed accounts, you know? Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. Like, they gotta do, like, they can do, like, those mood calendars for Roman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you're this Roman on Thursday. Yes. I yes. See, mm -hmm. come on. I should be part of the marketing department. I believe or it advertising i don't know no not advertising marketing sales <laughs> merch <laughs> all right let's continue on from here the proposition curse jericho and hook mm, that's what um, you're calling it that's how they were calling it were jericho they? said he had a proposition for hook uh. That's why I thought, okay, so that's what that, I was going to get into that because they had promoted it as the proposition. And so Chris Jericho basically says that he's proud of Hook and he's never been in the ring with someone like Hook. And he says, you know, after 33 years in this business, if you want any advice, I'm here for it. And I was like, that's the proposition. <laughs> but then, but then he says, you know, if, if you want my advice, I'm here. And Hook is like, I know who you are. You're Chris Jericho. And Chris Jericho's like, I know who you are. And I was like, okay, great. They both know who they are. And then Jericho says, I know who you are, but more importantly, I know who you can be. And then Hook says, bet, let's go. And they fist bump. So are they a tag team? Is he going to manage him? What was the proposition technically? That I, I, well, I, it felt like he wanted to be his manager. That's what he was, pu he was pushing. But then, like, halfway through the speech, he was like, but if you're not into that, I'll you can just come to me for advice if you want. Like, I'll be your friend. And Hook was like, yeah, I'll come to you for advice. You're Chris Jericho. But why are you saying this on camera is what I'm saying, Denise. Why are you telling us that you're going to give Hook advice on camera? That's what I thought was weird. I mean, unless he was trying not to be rude and give unsolicited advice. But why? why are we watching this? I don't have an answer. Because... So are they a tag team? 
Because I'm still confused. Like, I don't know if they're a tag team or if he's managing him now, but that would be kind of weird. Why would he manage that? When he was talking, I was like, what is this going to lead to? I don't want to see you manage Hook. That doesn't even make sense. But I'm not really sure. But, but if Chris Jericho is chilling on wrestling and just managing, maybe let's try it. I don't know, because I think part of the appeal of Hook is that he's young. He's a long he's hip. He doesn't say anything. That's the appeal. So if Chris Jericho's his manager, you're going to get like someone that's talking a whole lot. Yeah, we don't want I don't want anybody to talk for Hook and especially Chris Jericho. Like everything that Hook says, I think it's enough. He's the words that he keeps to a minimum are perfect for him. So Chris Jericho coming in, being louder, being Chris Jericho is going to kill the aura of Hook. Why are we doing this? So maybe the proposition was that they should just be friends. <laughs> Like, let's just be on the same page. Again, why are we watching this on TV? Why are we? You I don't know, but I'm trying that. to make sense of it. I feel like they were like, all right, I got something for you next week. And then they got to next week and they're like, what are we going to do? And they were like, I don't know. Well, Chris, Chris Jericho say he'll give him advice. And like, what? That, that's not a, pro I don't think that's a proposition. Though. I don't think so either. Did that's you? why I thought it was weird. And I was like, oh, so are we supposed to read in between the lines? <laughs> I'm propositioning you how I'll give you advice. I don't know if that's how this works. <laughs> I don't know either. All right. We got Patrick Moore here who sends in a super chat saying Jericho says for goal important than you risk hook says best mm -hmm. bet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Somebody's giving it up. Shout out to Patrick Moore. That's dope. Yeah, sorry, I'm confused. <laughs> this is, I think I, I want to say Patrick Moore is quoting me, but that just could be a thing. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was confused as you can tell. All right, Juan Ortega, thank you so much to Patrick, by the way. Mm -hmm. Juan Ortega says to catch and swerve, give the kings their crowns. I agree, man. Uh, yeah. Don't sleep on them. Alexander Fitzgerald says, hear me out. It's leading to Jericho versus Taz. No, Taz can't worry. He can't wrestle anymore. Oh, man. Well, rounded. Leo says, why would Hook need advice from Jericho when Taz is his dad who works there? <sighs> I mean, it's, it's nice to have advice from multiple people that have succeeded. Totally. One thousand percent. But I don't need a mentor, dude. My dad is Taz. So maybe this is going to lead to all of a sudden Taz gets really jealous and he's like, why are you out here, you know, managing my son, trying to guide him and shit like. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. It could happen, Denise. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Juan Castle says, Count Chakula. Jericho? Chakula? Am I reading that right? Chakula? Count Chakula Jericho trying to zap Hook. What is Chakula? <laughs> Reg. Is this a thing? Is this what the Twitter people are calling him? Count Chakula. <laughs> <laughs> you never had Count Chocula of cereal? No. Mm. So we're not talking about Dracula. Because <laughs> I thought this was a play on something about Dracula. It is. The chocolate oh, okay. version. The cereal? <laughs> there's a cereal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's a Dracula chocolate Chocula! cereal. Yeah, every year there, every year during Halloween, there's Count Chocula, there's Boo Berry, and there's what's the other one? Berry something. It's Halloween themed cereal. You never had it? No, never. Is, what the what you do you like cereal? Yeah. Big cereal fan, and you've never had the big three. I mean, I stick to the I stick to like You're Apple Jacks, be, like brand flakes, cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, okay. You know, I Frank stick to Frankenberry. The... Frankenberry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Rafael Garcia says, stay away from the aggressive flower child. <laughs> we are getting some creative super chats today. <laughs> it's mixed up. Very creative. All right. We got Tallulah, the $2 hookah, okay. who says, when will Jericho propose his own retirement? Never. Never. I think. You, honestly, Denise, when do you think Jericho's going to retire? How old is he right now? I think he's like, I want to say 54, maybe. 65 you think he'll go for another like 11 years oh maybe not maybe 60 i can honestly say i'm going for another 11 though i think you were right on the money that's oh the crazy shit! i part. thought i was exaggerating no i don't i think that's the crazy part with his the way that he works now he could get at minimum he could do another seven 
Man, well, we'll see. We'll find out. Thank you so much to Lula for that super chat as well. All right, let's keep it going. Let's get into the women's four-way here. We had Sky Blue versus Willow versus Anna versus Chris with Mercedes Monet on commentary. This was fun, man. Earlier, someone was saying how Willow was on freaking fire. We saw Julia Hart get the win, and we're going to be seeing Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale for the TBS championship at AEW Dynasty. And we saw a little stare down between Willow and Mercedes, and as well as Julia and Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this was a super fun match, Denise. I love the crowd during this. Like, all the big moments and the big spots, the crowd was all in this. Every lady came with a point to prove. Mercedes on commentary, just like, she, I I don't, listen, Mercedes, we didn't come to hear Mercedes talk. I just want to establish that. The appeal and draw of this lady is when the bell rings and she tears it up. I don't really want to hear her talk. I'm not really interested in hearing her on commentary. Like, I don't want any of this. I want to see her fight. But I understand, Denise, you want to build up. You want to have some things going. I see what they're doing. Beyond that, great match. I thought all ladies killed it. Sky Blue is... So good, Denise. There's some times when I watch women's matches on any promotion. I don't even have to single anyone out where some people just being young in the positions that she's put in get lost. Or there's times where like they're like, OK, I'm in a position that I don't know. Sky Blue never seems flustered. She never seems lost. She never seems out of the match. She always is like in the right positions. Like she's grown so much in these last couple of years and it shows every single match. Like she's so, so, so good. Stats amazing. I love the story that they're telling with Stokely. Stokely just being on the outside telling, doing this thing. Willow though, Denise, in this match, she got like this certain extra fire since Mercedes has shown up. Maybe just I because why? Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe just because the spotlight's on her and, and more, but like she just is more powerful, more charismatic, more great. Everything about her is up tenfold. So I was really happy to see her win this match. And he's really fun match. And, and uh, you know, who, how did you, what was enough time? It was enough everything, right? For like a women's thing. But, you know, there's always more that is needed. That pounce from Willow, I swear to God, every time I see it, it's like the first time I see it because I always have the same reaction where I'm like, oh, like it always takes me aback, which is funny because I've seen it a million times, but she has my favorite pounce. But you're right about that. I'm so glad you pointed out that she has suddenly had this new, you know, pep in her step. Mm -hmm. And I think she recognizes and it's very clear based on what we saw last week and what we saw here tonight. It's very clear that we are going to get this Willow Mercedes program. And let's be real, Reg, when you are going to be in a program with one of the highest paid women in the wrestling industry, for sure, in that particular company, you can't go in there and be mid. You can't go in there and go at a five. You got to go in there and be 10 out of 10, how 13 out of 10. You need to be the very best version of yourself because that is going to be your uh, make it or break it. Like, let's be real. When they do Willow and Mercedes, which I imagine is probably going to be Mercedes' first match in AEW, is probably going to be against Willow. You don't want it to be a disappointment, right? Like, you want it to be good shit because everyone is going to be looking at that match. Everyone's going to yep. be getting ready to wag their fingers and say, oh, I told you so. Or to, or and other people are just ready to be excited and to see the Mercedes that they know she can be, right? So, but on top of that, you know, it's pro wrestling. It takes two to tango, right? Yep. So Willow also has to bring her very best. Now, we've seen both of these women wrestle together. We were there at the show, New Japan. Great stuff. Unfortunately, with the way that things ended, it wasn't, you know, a hit for that reason. Mm-hmm. Still a good match with everything that happened before. But unfortunately, we don't even remember any of it. We really only remember the injury. So now it's like, all right, like this is Willow's moment to not only be the competitor that Mercedes needs her to be, but also her moment to become an even bigger name on the brand. Totally, Denise. And there's that little, uh, I don't know if it's a black cloud, but there's that cloud of that previous match of like, 
we were going towards something, we were cooking towards something, and it ended that way. There might be something like they're playing it up as a story. Like Exc- Excalibur on commentary was like, "Do you feel a type of way, Mercedes, that you got hurt by Willow? Like, do you feel like she played a part?" And Will and Mercedes is like, "I don't know. She's seeming pretty suspicious since then." And it's like they have to kind of overcome what that match represents and have this new one. But yeah, all eyes are going to be on her, Denise. So she has this new kind of refound like there's a whole gener- new generation of people that are seeing me. They don't know me. They're just being discovered. So I have to pick up my part and do what I can to make sure that my half of this is great. So I'm excited about what potentials to come. Willow won the match. She's going to be challenging at dynasty Julia Hart for the TBS championship. Who you got, Denise? You think that Willow is the shoe in to win this? Yes, I think she is. I think this is the shoe in for Willow to grab that title. And when she eventually first faces Mercedes, then we're going to see Mercedes become TBS champion. Mm, Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. All right. We got some super chats here. This one's from Alexander Fitzgerald who says, I love this women's match tonight. The women's division has been so fun to watch in AEW. Do you see Chris Statlander eventually turning heel? Chris, like the thing that I love most about Chris is that she has a lot of power. Like that's honestly my favorite, my favorite thing about her. She has a lot of power in terms of her being a heel. I can see it. Yeah, I totally. See it. I think with the story that they've been telling and Willow's kind of in that in between of like Stokely might be trying to turn Chris over, but I'm not really down with that. But also maybe I am down with that. I don't know what position I am. I think this will be a good thing for stat if she does turn heel, because I think on the women's side, they need to have more strong heels. And I think stat could be a really strong heel if she's given the opportunity. So, you know what? I kind of want to see Chris Statlander as, and again, I going back to the power thing. I wish that, you know, we've seen her, you know, she let go of the whole alien thing and now she's just Chris Statlander, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of want to see her presented as more of this like Wonder Woman type of character Um. because she's got such a great physique. Like she's, you know, bigger than a lot of the girls. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I would really like it if they presented her in that light. She's coming. Her name's Megan Bain. You ever seen Megan Bain? Yeah. Yeah. I have seen. Yeah. That's her. All right, well, there you go. Amir F says, <laughs> She's Willow on her way. <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman is coming. <laughs> Amir F says, Willow versus Mercedes at double or nothing. One year and five days after the original New Japan Pro Wrestling Resurgent match. Is it really one year and five days after once this double or nothing happens? It was May, Denise. It was the middle of May when it happened. Yeah. They just <sighs> announced that double or nothing's going to be back in Vegas. How do you feel about that, first off, Denise? Because Famously, after last year, we talked, uh, I don't want to say the nicest about the crowd. We talked a lot of shit, and we were part of the crowd, so we basically were there on our own selves, all right? So we can talk (laughs) shit about that Las Vegas crowd, because we were in it. What do you think? Well, how do you feel, Denise? We're going back. I don't know. We should all have a meeting, get together, and make sure that we're all loud. (laughs) Honestly. Right. Before we go in, like, you guys, are we ready for this? Are we doing this? Like, what's going on here? For reals, because it was so bad. I don't want to sit there again in a bad crowd. We can't. Mm -mm. You know what the problem is? This is what I think the problem is sometimes. The problem is there's too many well, let me ask you a question. Reg, are you the kind of person who starts cheers and chants at shows? Uh, See, I don't even like to chant, honestly, most of the time. That's the problem. There's yeah. too many people like you and me mm-hmm. that just like to sit there and not mm-hmm. say or do anything. I like and- to do stuff, but I'm not going to be chanting. This is awesome. Like, I react to wrestling like, yeah. I'll yell and scream, but I'm not going to be like chanting and doing all that. That's just not really how I get down. See, I wait for somebody else to start the chant. And once it gets to my section at the appropriate time, then I get to join in. I'm just an old head snob and so many chants I don't like. Like, I hate this is awesome. You deserve it. Worst chant of all time. What? This is tape. We want tables. I hate all those chants. That's the biggest issue. It's like, these chants are stupid, though, you guys. You you deserve it. This is awesome is not even a real chant. Most of the time people chant it. They don't even. It's like. It's just like a false finish. This is awesome. But nothing's happened yet, you guys. 
Yeah. What is, that, that, what, that, what is awesome? That was just a false finish. Sorry, yeah. I'm getting an old head, you guys. I know, I know. I get it. I get it. I get it. I sat next to Reg at full gear, and you were like so pissed when the this is, we want fire chance started. Because, dude, they're not going to set someone on fire, you guys. Like, let's <laughs> reel it in. Like, they had brought out tables, glass, barbed wire, and then we want fire. It's like, all right, dude, just stab them and kill them. Right but, now. Reg, oh. I wanted fire, and you I did. didn't want to chant after you were like, oh, this freaking fire chant. And I was like, I wasn't ready to be like, we want fire. And then I heard you say, like, screw these, we want fire chants. And I was like, oh. Well, I don't want anyone to die. I'm like, you guys, we got to be on the like okay yeah we want a gun it's like no dude like we don't want i want like that person i want them to simulate people getting hurt very bad drop them off a building do whatever you do but like let's relax man oh man we want fire i shamed denise out of a chance you did you shamed me and i'm easily shamed <laughs> i'm sorry Oh man. And that's never has that ever happened to you or to anybody here in the chat? Have you ever said you like somebody and you were a fan of somebody and then somebody else shamed you for it? Oh, that happened. Yeah, totally. All the time. Big shame. That happened to me several years ago when I was watching the Young Bucks wrestle at an AWS show in, in LA, mm -hmm. somewhere in LA. And I was like, oh yeah, I really like the Young Bucks. And somebody was like, why do you like the Young Bucks? Like they were going off and saying all the things that people that have criticisms about the Young Bucks say. So I was like, oh, man, like, am I a loser? Like, do I have not good taste? And so I kept it a secret for like two months after that. I was like, oh, yeah, the young books are coming out. But I just like sat there and I was like, because mm -hmm. I was shamed. And then finally I came back and was like, screw it. I like the young yeah, books. Gotta, yeah, no, you just got to take it in. Uh, Denise, that's kind of how I felt. When I first saw the young books, I didn't really like them. Like I've talked about it on a few podcasts. The, the super kick thing, I was like, all right, you guys, relax. But legit, like two shows later, it clicked. And I was like, oh, I get it. They're doing this thing. I understand. And I started to understand it. But everybody else was like, these guys are the worst tag team of all time. And I'm just like, I don't think so, though. I think they're pretty cool. Eventually, yeah. everybody came around. But for a while there, it was like you had to be like a, a secret Young Bucks fan, man. It's crazy. Yes. And you know what else happens when someone's really popular and you're not a fan? And it's the same thing when you can't say anything because you're like, oh, man, everyone loves this person, but I don't. I don't see it. And you that just was have me, to like, uh, shut up. What time did Monday Night Raw end on Monday? That was me. <laughs> I saw your tweet. I saw your tweet, Reg. I'm like, oh, the greatest show you guys have ever seen. And then they're like, oh, there was no matches on. I'm like, what? I'm voting you hater of the year, Reg. Listen, I just like wrestling. Even if it's like today, no stories. It's just good ass matches. Reel me in. You guys want to see me two guys walking in the back? OK, no, no, no. Get, get me out of here, Denise. Get okay, me stop, out of here. Pause. Stop talking. You're going to get yourself canceled in the IWC. Oh, man. Anyway, so if you've ever been there, whether you like someone or didn't like someone, you're not alone. We've all been shamed at one point or another. Tallulah, the $2 hookah, says, did MM, oh, Mercedes Monet, drink a battle, bottle of lead paint, sounded bland. Oh, oh, sorry, I was a little confused. She was a little soft-spoken. That's just how she talks, though. Yeah. That's why, again, when I said that, Denise, we don't want to hear her talk. We don't want to hear her do commentator cause, commentary because she's that's not what she's here for. We got crazy 101 who says, OG is mad. Chill. I wanted fire too. <laughs> oh, you're the OG, by the way. Casey, you needed to know this. You guys need to chill with the fire. These wrestlers put their lives on the line. They don't need their bodies burned. Yeah, but we like fire, Reg. Damn it. I'm trolling. Fire is really cool. When they do a fire table, I'm like, yeah, light it up. You know, my, my, the thing that I hate the most when there's a fire spot and they botch it or like it yeah. doesn't land, right? And I'm like, you really caught my hope. We saw one. Yeah, was it was the edge Nick, the Nick Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited and then it didn't hit and I was like, God damn it. Like it's damn so it. rare when we see those. Right. So when we see it, it needs to hit. It needs to be 10 out of 10. It's the issue is, is like the error for the margin for error is so small, Denise. Like you need their seconds. Like if you go point one second too long, it's gonna happen. And that's what happened. Yeah. Alexander Fitzgerald says, Reg, you should chant. We want Keith Lee versus Swerve. I don't like y'all. You know what? <laughs> when it gets really quiet, like whatever's the quietest part of the show, just jump up and be like, we want Keith Lee versus Swerve. I hate you guys. I'm not doing that. On Reg, I'll pay you. Okay. All right. We want. 
I will pay you if it comes out on the broadcast. Don't pour me out, Denise, for <laughs> chance. If it comes out on the AEW broadcast, you standing up and being like, we want Keith Lee versus Swerve really, really loud at the quietest point, I will pay you. We don't want that. <laughs> Oh man, Juan Ortega says impressed with Anna J tonight when she hit that Guerrero special on Chris, pinning both Chris and Sky Willow. Um, DVD, Willow DVD. Oh, the oh, DVD oh. that she did on Sky, yeah, yeah. On Sky on the apron, props to the women, dude. They've been killing it. I mean, we were here talking about that Rampage match last week. I mm. I freaking love that. I love what they did today. I mean, they're they're starting to climb. They're starting to be a topic of conversation when we were sitting here not talking about the women because there was nothing to talk about other how they just didn't show the women now there's a different conversation now we're actually talking about the women in the actual roster yes exactly getting on tv denise being put in positions having backstage segments it feels really different that dvd that willow hit on sky was insane and i loved right afterwards Willow went and just started slapping hands with all the fans. It was really, really funny moment in this great match. But yeah, props to those women just getting times to shine. We just saw that amazing match last week, the, the hardcore match. So them getting to do it again was awesome. Juan Castle says, Reg, please get my girl Denise some count cereal. Come on, Denise. I don't know how you don't know about that. I just do. Um, I don't know. Magic spoon. <laughs> Sheldon Jackson says Reg is slowly becoming Dr. Umar with some of his wrestling takes. Lord help us all. I know Dr. Umar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I finally know something. <laughs> I'm up to date. I know Dr. Umar got me dead. <laughs> hey, full circle, man. Full circle. <laughs> I wish y'all would leave me alone. <laughs> Crazy 101 says Keith versus Swerve will happen, Reg. You guys, stop. Honestly, the day that match happens, like, <laughs> you're just going to pop up in everyone's mind. I know. I'm going to just cry. Remember, we got really close today. It almost I know. happened. I was, doing I was like, damn, laps. they got me, you guys, but they didn't get me. I was doing victory laps. Like, you I. Are. I really just thought, wow, how embarrassing for Reg that he went on this whole rant and then it didn't happen. Like, what did you do? You had to do some sort of witchcraft for this thought shit not you to had happen. Me, but of course, like Ben Diesel said, you never had me. You never had your car, Denise. I know oh, these things. God. I knew when they announced it that it wasn't going to happen. I'm like, I'm going to let how? everybody. I just know. It's I so know. rare when they actually announce a match that it doesn't happen. I know this match, though, got bad karma on it. It's never going to happen. Watch one day it's gonna happen, and once it's the, not, once they're like both little old men, and <laughs> we were like, Oh, what's that one match we never got to see? And some random booker's gonna book it. Yeah. No, it'll probably happen when Swerve is champion. I think I don't even know the status of Keith Lee. Honestly, we're talking about Keith Lee. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know either. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, <laughs> oh man. All right, moving on. Darby Allen, Tony Hawk, skateboarding skateboarding yeah this was let, cool this was for a cause so this is cool um it was it got Tony right. Hawk did a trick off of his foot Denise oh I did I saw that that was pretty cool I was kind of nervous that Darby was actually gonna do some sort of freaking stunt <laughs> I know when he start when the promo started he was like I wasn't able to climb Mount Everest I'm like oh that means you're gonna do something dumb right now <laughs> You're like, how's he going to skateboard with the crutches? I know. I'm like, damn, this guy's going to try to do a backflip on these crutches and still get hurt. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't. Damn. Uh, skatepark.org, for those of you who want to donate. I posted the link. It's very easy, skatepark.org. And you can click on it if you want to donate and support. Because, yeah, I, I do feel bad for Darby that he didn't get to do Mount Everest. And I didn't, I didn't actually realize that he was doing it for a specific cause until tonight. Yeah, same here. I didn't know that it was for a Tony Hawk Foundation type thing and that it was attached to something. I thought he was just like, I'm about to go, you guys. See you later. But it <laughs> there's a little bit more behind the scenes and what goes into this. So that's cool. I mean, we all are, my generation, are huge Tony Hawk fans. So seeing him on the show tonight hit pretty hard. My first job ever was DC Shoes. Oh. Have I told wow. you this? I used, to build, I used to build skateboards at DC Shoes. It was part Did of my really? job. Yeah, it was my first job ever. I used to work at the Citadel in commerce. Wow. The worst. And 
I was a sales associate at DC Shoes for three years. And my part of my job, besides like folding clothes and getting people's shoes, was to build the skateboards. That's insane. You came a long way, Denise. I know. I used to be really scared of that job because our back room was haunted. And um, we used to like see things back there. Well, it's the Citadel. A lot of people have been like, oh, it's the worst. Don't go to the Citadel. No, I'm sorry. Not. It's the worst. <laughs> it's literally the worst. I worked there for six years, by the way. Six did... years, Denise. You've seen some things. You need therapy. <laughs> I do need therapy. I had three. I did three years at DC Shoes at the Citadel. And then I did three years at the Coach Factory store. Oh, you need therapy. Line her up, you guys. She did six years of hard time, you guys. Yep. <laughs> Let at me the tell coach you. store? Oh my God. You, you were, how many times did you get yelled at? You got no, I don't mind there. getting yelled at. I was getting hit by customers. Like people don't talk about some of the abuse that people that sales associates go through. Worse, my particular job was I was for coach. I was specifically a sales associate, which meant I couldn't do anything else but sales. And so my job was basically. I would walk around with a calculator all day and tell people prices, okay? It was literally my job. I memorized all the prices. And get this, people just to try to like mess with you or just to like get a discount, they would go to the register and they would say, oh yeah, that girl over there, she told me it was this price. And I'm like, no, I never told you that price. They'll say a lower price because they knew that if you went to the register and said you got quoted a price, that they would honor it. Yep. And that was not true. I'm like, guys, I'm like, I work here. I've been saying these bags have been the same price for the last three months. I'm just suddenly going to change the price. And on top of that, like people would hit you. Like, yeah. I can't explain this. Like people would shove you out of the way. People would hit you with the bags because people got really crazy. Them coach bags, Denise, like people lose some lives over them coach bags. Basically what would happen is the resellers would come into the mm -hmm. store they would buy 12 bags to resell them on freaking eBay. Yep. So you're talking like $80 bags that suddenly are like 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Terrible. It was bad. Life. Yeah. I don't, well, look where you are now, Denise. You're cool. I got PTSD, bro. That, you, we haven't talked about it on the show. I saw that you're doing that show with Thunder Rosa at WrestleMania weekend. That is really cool. I'm going to try to be there. I think I'll have time for it. Please yeah. do. And if you go take pictures, yeah, I need a photographer. Course. I'll be there. <laughs> That's super cool. I'm happy that you're doing that. 1230 PM. For those of you guys who are wondering at the 2300 arena, I am going to be doing a kickoff show with Thunder Rosa for busted Sick. open at the busted mm. open WrestleMania party. Uh, so please, if you're there, make sure to join and tune in. It'll be a good time. Super um, Sick. My T90K says, did you see the boogeyman in the back room? I'm actually too embarrassed to tell the story of what I saw because it was very embarrassing, Reg. And I don't think I could tell the story. It's really bad. Like I've never told this story. It's too embarrassing. Can you tell it to me off air at least? <laughs> okay, fine. I will tell the story. Yes. I was, I'm crying already. I was like 15, okay? No, wait, not sorry, not 15. I was 16. Mm -hmm. And I was closing the store and it was just me and my manager. And my manager is like a man in his 40s, okay? Very mm -hmm. nice guy, but he's in his 40s. And then it's me, right? So we were doing our little duties that we do to clean the store. I clean the store and he counts the register. Mm -hmm. And I had to go put the the shoes that never sold. I had to go put them back in the back room. So it was just me alone in the back room. And I was so nervous, right? Like my anxiety levels were always very high. And I had to put them in the right spot because every shoe size and every style has to go exactly as is. Mm -hmm. Reg, <laughs> the store was closed. It had already been closed for an hour. Okay. It's nighttime. It's like 10 p.m. And I'm in the back room alone. And I see a little boy running. <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding you. I see a little boy running with a gray shirt. And I fucking ran out. I fucking ran out screaming and crying. And it gets really bad from here. I was so scared, trembling, trembling. I jumped on my manager. And I was like, there's somebody. Oh. There's somebody in the room. There's somebody in the back room. I just saw a kid oh, and I'm crying and I'm trembling and I'm so freaking scared. 
And then he's like, calm down, Denise, calm down. And I'm like in this frantic state, okay? And then he tells me it's okay. My wife is here. Oh my God, Denise. And I turn, his wife and some little kid suddenly were there. I guess they came in when I was in the back stocking the freaking shoes and the little kid was on his way to the bathroom. And it was so humiliating. You're embarrassing. It was so humiliating because I was like, I just jumped on this man. <laughs> you jumped on and his wife was probably like, and what the <laughs> hell's going on? Here? <laughs> but she like she she was like, oh, my God, are you OK? Because I I thought I saw a spirit. Denise. I'm like, I just saw the spirit of a child and it was so lifelike because the little kid fucking ran. And yeah, it was I, lifelike because it was an actual life. Yeah. And here's the thing, like, you got to talk, like, we're seeing stacks of shoes, okay? There's a bunch of freaking shoes and all the boxes are black. So this is a black freaking freaking dark back room with shoes, okay? And the aisles are tiny, very close. And I just see this kid running and I'm like, <gasps> like, I thought it was a spirit. <laughs> spirit it was the most terrifying embarrassing moment of my life i thought it was a spirit it's so funny and i still like i remember very vividly very vividly i said denise i'll say the shirt i thought it was a spirit that was the most embarrassing moment of my life so congratulations y'all just heard the most embarrassing <laughs> moment of my life and then i found out by the way that the next day he told all the co-workers i wasn't there but he told everybody because it got oh. back to me yes you gotta be yo yesterday let me tell you about home girl she was wilding <laughs> it was so bad she came and jumped into my arms my wife was here my kids here what the hell <laughs> But no, that wasn't even his kid. It was like a nephew or something. So oh, I've never seen the kid. It was just some freaking kid. But like, think about it. Like, you see a freaking spirit. Come on. Like, I thought that was real. I don't, I can't think about it, Denise, because I've never seen a spirit. What the hell would you do if right now you went to the bathroom, Reg, and there was some fucking person in there? What would you do, honestly? You get, you freak out and you panic. <laughs> And you can't think straight, and it's all a blur. You're just in a mode of panic. I can't believe you. I jumped on this man in front of his wife. What would you do if you went to the bathroom and there was a spirit in there? I don't think I would do anything. I've never seen that. I would die. I would die. I would die. Bro, you know how many times I, you've seen my hallway? You know how many times I walk from, from the living room to the bathroom and I go, oh, dear God, not today. Please don't Denise, let me see anything today. Like this long that's how long your how your yeah but is. i'm always afraid that i'm gonna see a spirit oh my god what spirit talula the two dollar hooker says denise style skateboards for sale hey hey you you need to get some uh speak now skateboards denise come on come on yeah freedom so says, together and everything <laughs> denise do a kickflip oh yeah i can't mm -hmm. do that i can't do any tricks hunter tega says denise stories boys if you don't like wrestling mm-hmm Crazy 101 says, did you pray in Spanish? Dude, I didn't even know my name. That's how that's how scared I was. Scary. Mike T90K says that that Denise on them drugs again. Yeah, I'm sure they were like, yo, homegirl, what's up? Like, I think she might have been, you know, hitting the pipe in the back. So embarrassing. I don't think I could ever look this man in the eye if I ran into him. You went back to work after that? Yeah, but I think like later on in the future, I still wouldn't be able to look him in the eye. I'd be too embarrassed. He tells that story at family. Gathering. yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure mm -hmm. it was humiliating they probably see you on wwe tv and they're like this one time <laughs> like oh, so she bad. had the big dc shoes on just clump, 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 clump. you had you used to wear the big dc shoes too huh yeah i used to wear the shoes I actually still like them yeah, yeah I know you plus it'd be weird if i was working at dc shoes wearing converse i mean you know it'd be like that bands <laughs> yeah yeah. All right. We got one last thing to get into. Actually, no, we got two things to get into still. Holy shit. All right. Really quickly, the tournament for the tag teams, the Young Bucks defeat Private Party, Orange Cassidy and Tramperetta defeat Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, um, both of them advancing into the tournament. And now we're going to be seeing Young Bucks versus Best Friends. Yes, I really like the Young Bucks and Private Party match. They played off of the match that happened four or five years ago. Previously did some of the callbacks to the finishes that Falconero off the barricade onto the floor 
crazy stuff. Really great stuff. Uh, somebody said they didn't like the Young Bucks stick, but I kind of like this. We've been seeing the Young Bucks in their previous form for 15, 16 for a long time. So I kind of like this new thing. They're trying out some stuff. It's not all super kicks. They're leaning into their heel tactics. I thought it was a really fun thing and not that surprising. The other match, you know, that was a match too. How'd you like that match, Denise? It was just there. I can't even tell you what <laughs> happened in that. It was just there. Like it happened. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. We got Juan Castle here who says, I'm sure Denise was shroomed out of her mind. I don't even know what shrooms are, but I'm assuming they're mushrooms and you probably get high with them. I don't even know what shrooms are. But Good, Denise. Keep it that way. Stay sheltered. Yeah. See, I wasn't. Oh, God, I wish I could say I was on drugs when that happened. <laughs> yeah, that would make the story not as embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. No as a cat. No alcohol, no weed, no shrooms, no nothing. All right, we got to get into Kanoshke Takeshita versus Swerve Strickland because this was the match of the night. So much freaking fun. A lot of stuff that happened here. I mean, Poison Rana, Thunderbomb from Takeshita to Swerve. Swerve with the stomp. He goes to Pinkanet to Takeshita. Kicks out. I mean, what the hell? Eventually, this match continues. Another stomp. Big pressure. Gets the win. Swerve is now the number one contender for the AW World Championship and is going to be facing Samoa Joe at Dynasty. And we got a promo from Samoa Joe afterwards where he told Swerve that he wasn't that man. It's a lot here. Yeah, I love the uh, promos leading into this match with Don Callis talking about Takeshita and how awesome he is and how he beat Kenny Omega and Swerve going over why he's in this match and his record. Uh, Tony Khan was making a big emphasis the, the last couple of days of like, whoever wins this match, we're bringing back the rankings. They're going to be the number one contender. A lot of stakes were added to just like, what seemingly is a regular, really good match, but I love that the all the stakes and everything, it felt important. And then they got to the match, and we knew what it was going to be. Takeshita has been on an insane fire run. Every single match of his is, like, groundbreaking. It's, it's changing, and Swerve is ready to become world champion. This match is cementing his legacy and what he's about to become. Great work from both. I thought they hit all of their stuff. This match was so good. I want to see them do it five more times. Like it, yeah. it, it felt like an appetizer. It was like, damn, they're cooking. And it's amazing match. But they, they were like in four and a half gear, almost to the fifth gear, almost there. But amazing work uh, from both. And I love that they put an emphasis. Swerve was like, and when I win this, Samoa Joe, I'm coming for that championship. Samoa Joe saying, you don't want this. Great work from everybody. I hope that they don't forget to reward Takeshita because we already know Swerve's reward is is it's incoming. I think we can put two and two together. I think most of us are expecting for Swerve to become a W world champion, but Takeshita has been doing spectacular work. He did that great match with Kenny Omega. He, mm -hmm. the match is actually, I should say. And then recently the work that he did with Will Ospreay, this match with Swerve Takeshita is now that guy. Yeah. Takeshita is that guy that if you want to make sure that you give someone a great match and they're on the rise, you put them against Takeshita, but I don't want Takesh Takeshita to be forgotten about during all of this because I don't think they have anybody like Kanoshka Takeshita that can do the things that he can do, and then you'd not run with it at some point. Yeah, like I was saying before, Denise, the big match, the big win for Takeshita now is defeating the international champion, Kanoshka. Kuska Okada for that belt. If he beats Okada in this amazing match that we know that they're going to have, I think that'll be the win and that'll cement him as who he needs to be. That's direction that needs to happen. We need to continue building Takeshita for the rest of the year, for the rest of this time, doing exactly what we've been doing here. But beating Okada, I think, is where it's at. I want to see Takeshita, like, after Okada does his thing with the title, because obviously I want to see him do his thing too. Like, you just can't have Okada lose right away. Like, that's not going to no. happen. Right. But down the line, I do want to see, I want to see both Okada and Takeshita go on an Orange Cassidy run with that title where they're just going out there and having like 30 damn matches or however many matches and wrestling all of these different people. Yeah, I want to that, see that for both of them. That's Takeshita's spot. I don't know if we would see Okada as active as that because he's the big dog, but Takeshita defending the championship every single week like Orange Cassidy would put a bunch of butts in the seats and would lead to a bunch of amazing matches. And I want him to stay heel. I want him to stay yeah. heel because I like, heel. yes, I think that he can just become like that really scary guy that all of a sudden you're like, shit, can I beat this man? I don't know. Like I want him to make people doubt themselves because he's that good and he's that frightening or evil or whatever. Exactly. Kind of playing into the character that he's been playing recently, just 
quiet, menacing, and just a badass. Yes, exactly that. But this was a phenomenal match, man. I'm mm-hmm. really excited for Dynasty because honestly, like we look at this card, Reg, and I mean, I was already like the second they said, oh, um, freaking Will Ospreay versus um, Brian Danielson, I was already like, oh, yeah, this is great. Like, this is perfect. But now they're yeah. adding, uh, you know, all of these other matches. We've got the tag team tournament, which I'm expecting is going to be the Young Bucks and FTR. And then on top of that, you also have, uh, you know, just – I'm already blanking on everything that's happening. <laughs> uh, let me pull up the card really quickly. Hold on one second, because my brain is just like done. Uh, apparently, they don't got the card up here. Like, what's going on? Oh, there it is. Wow, I can't look. Can't read. All right, here we go. Every match. So we talked already about Osprey Danielson. We're getting the tag team match, as I said. But Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale, and then Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland. Why did I think there was already another one announced? All right, those are all the matches. But honestly, though, it's looking mm-hmm. good. Yeah, the everything that's been announced, there's gonna be some super oh pack and uh, Okada has been announced too. Oh that's shit. Enough. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Damn. All right. I don't know. Has it been announced or are they trying to do that? I thought it was announced. I thought last I week. I think they're like, trying you know, to do that. Okay, it hasn't yeah, been I think they're trying to do that. I, mean, that I was like, wait a minute. I was like, huh. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that that's the direction they're going in. Um, we got another one here from Crazy 101 who says Takeshta as international champion. Um, will be lit too. Amen. It really will be. I'm so excited for everything that they're doing here. That's it. Did we talk about everything? I think we got through the whole uh, episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody, by the way, because honestly, I was a little worried that there wasn't so much news on the show. And I thought, damn, no one's going to come into the show. No one's going to send super chats. I was like already thinking the worst, but everyone came through, man. So I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who took part, who joined in, whether you watched the video or the audio, uh, everybody who sent in super chats. You have no idea how far that goes. So seriously, thank you. Um, Reg, what do you got going on? I want to reiterate the same thing. Denise and I were like, yo, sometimes these shows, the dynamites, we don't know if they're going to carry, how they're going to happen. But you it's guys gamble all, every time. Gamble, Denise, you never know. Somebody, one day we could show up and nobody's here. But you guys always show up. Don't guys say that. Knock on wood. wood. What are you trying to do? Put me out of business, Reg? On, we don't need to knock on wood. The supporters are amazing. They're always showing up. They're going to continue to be here because they love it here. No, you guys are legit the best. And you make these shows so much fun. The wrestling is always great, but just knowing I could come in and talk to Denise and we're going to talk about spirits and pizza or whatever dumb thing makes it extra. And you guys contributing is so cool. And the WrestleMania fun needs help. So I'm glad that you guys are here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, tomorrow. Raw H post show uh, Saturday. I'm regular Grab City podcast. Uh, I'm with Denise this week a couple times. I'm going to be on the SmackDown post show. And I'm going to be on the Collision post show. Collision looks super fire, so I'm excited about that. We got Matt Logan here who says, Reg, chill, no picking on the fans. Oh, you know, it's just a little harmless fun. Stop it. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, you guys. Well, you already know what's going on here. Um, Friday, Reg and I for SmackDown. Saturday, Reg and I for Collision. And then on top of that, next week is WrestleMania week. You know what? I should make an announcement right now. Should I make an announcement right now? I think you should, Denise. Do it. Let's make an announcement right now. So on, let me see what day is it. Next Wednesday, exactly one Wednesday from this Wednesday, <laughs> um, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I am going to be doing the WrestleMania prediction show with none other than WrestleTalk's very own Luke Owen. You guys know Luke Owen, <laughs> Team Danuke. <laughs> It's happening again. Uh, People really love when Luke and I do shows. So please come through. That is happening Wednesday. He's going to be joining me for the prediction show. And then, of course, there's going to be tons of WrestleMania coverage next week. All right. That is it, everybody. Thank you so much. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye, everyone.